The south of France is frequented by the more orange-coloured type of the lesser purple emperor. This much localised butterfly flies in two generations from May to the end of July and from the beginning of August until mid-September. It's most commonly found in the canopy of alluvial forest strips at the edge of riverbanks. This beautiful, rare and shy butterfly is especially attracted to the sap seeping from lesions of tree trunks. In the morning, the males can be found mud puddling on the river banks, where they are attracted to mineral salts. The lesser purple emperor males differ from the females by a stunning iridescent purple colour on the upper side of their wings. Although the lesser purple emperor is not usually attracted to the nectar of flowers, it can occasionally be found on the flowers of the Christ thorn. The butterflies feast on overripe fruit, like here in this cherry tree. Males defend their territory from a perch at the end of a leaf. It regularly flies over its territory in search of females and returns to its post. Fertilised females rest well hidden in the foliage and become active after one o'clock in the afternoon. The female lays single greenish eggs, mainly on the tip of the upper side of a leaf of the poplar. The females rest frequently in the sun in between egg laying. She uses small and large trees and will lay her eggs from 60 centimetres up to 10 metres high. Next to a poplar tree, a female is laying eggs on a willow.
The European wasp is an aggressive predator of eggs and young caterpillars. But luckily, the European bee-eater also lives along the riverbanks and feeds mainly on wasps and dragonflies. Within 24 hours, a brownish ring appears in the middle of the egg. A week later and the caterpillar appears. The young caterpillar will eat the shell, rich in proteins, and rests on the tip of the leaf. At this stage, the caterpillar eats the same leaf on which it's resting. The young caterpillars, 5 mm in size, give their whereabouts away by their characteristic eating patterns seen on the leaf on which they are feeding. Some days later, during the first molt, a pair of forked horns appear from under the exoskeletal head capsule, characteristic of this species. Body fluid is pumped into the horns to enlarge them. Very soon the green horns darken. And it will eat its old skin. Now, the caterpillar uses different leaves for resting and for feeding. After eating, it returns to the same leaf. During sunny days, the caterpillar rears up to avoid overheating.
This caterpillar is ready for its second molt. The leaves can shake seriously in the wind. Therefore, the caterpillars spin silk along their way as a kind of safety line. The caterpillars are extremely well camouflaged and blend in with the leaf veins. Despite their excellent camouflage, many caterpillars fall prey to the golden orioles living in the canopy. On reaching Instar 4, the horns remain green, although the fork tips are brownish. After this molt, the caterpillar grows significantly. Now it travels greater distances to feed, but it will return to its leaf. The red-banded sand wasp hunts for caterpillars to feed its offspring. It stunned its prey with a paralyzing injection. The caterpillar will be hidden in a tiny underground burrow. Many different species of caterpillars and other insects feed on poplar trees, like this orgiantic caterpillar. In their final stage, the caterpillars bite the stem of the devoured leaf so as to allow it to drop down, hiding its whereabouts from potential predators.
When fully grown, the caterpillar goes in search of a suitable leaf. It will spin a silken bed on which the chrysalis will be fixed. At maturity, the caterpillar turns pale. It also fixes the leaf to the stem thus preventing it from falling down during the chrysalis stage. At the base of the leaf, a cushion is spun on which it will anchor its anal prolegs. Two days later, the transformation begins. The majority of lesser emperors hatch at the beginning of August, at sunrise. The butterfly warms up in the sunshine, during which time the wings harden. The iridescence of the upper side of the male's wings is due to the angle of the light reflecting off the scale structure. At the end of August, males and females feast on the abundant blackberries. In September, second generation males perch in the canopy and fly around in the hope of finding a female. At the end of the summer, the females lay their eggs preferentially on damaged leaves and ones with autumn coloured hues.
In between egg laying, the female rests on a fig tree. and feeds on sap seeping from a willow. End of August, a caterpillar hatches. Probably because the leaf is damaged, the caterpillar goes in search of a more suitable leaf. Just before hibernation, the caterpillar of one centimetre molts for the second time and now the horns lose their twig shape. The caterpillars change colour becoming brown, blending in with the discoloured leaf or the stem on which they rest. Brownish caterpillars select a bud or branch of their host tree on which to rest and overwinter. They remain uncovered and motionless throughout the winter. In March, poplar flowers bloom. And as soon as the leaf buds burst, the caterpillars awake to feeding on them. Gradually, the caterpillars turn green. In May, poplar seed is carried off by the wind. After the molt, the horns will be fork-shaped again.
When mature, the caterpillars transform into pupae. Then, around the end of May, the butterflies emerge. Although its habitat seems more or less intact, it is remarkable that this beautiful butterfly remains so elusive and rare in our region. <laughs> 